Hi, I'm David Harry from Liverpool TV and in this particular video I'm going to be showing how to create MP4 files with H.264 and AAC audio encoded within them using X.264 from Handbrake via HQX files from EDIUS in 4K UHD. Right, so the first thing to do is uh, to get on board with a EDIUS project and I just magically happen to have one to hand. Right, I'm just going to skip through this really quickly because um, I'm assuming that you know most people know exactly what they're going to be doing as far as exporting from EDIUS is concerned if that's what you're actually using. Um, I mean, this tutorial may well get picked up by other people. They can just skip past this little bit here um, because they may well have different codecs that they want to you know, encode using Handbrake and... The rest of this tutorial would work for something else, but right now this is just for EDIUS users. Right, so what I'm going to do, I've got a uh, like a production as it were on the timeline here, so I'm just going to play this through quickly. Okay, so this is just an intro thing that I'm building up over some time just to you know so i can throw in front of some of my tutorials so anyway what we need to do here to start off with we need to make sure that we export from the timeline uh, the exact part that we want as far as our output is concerned and what it is that we eventually need to be in the mp4 file so what we'll do i'm going to go right to the very beginning and put an in marker and then I'm going to go to the out here and put an out marker. Now, this is just for my particular use here. But whatever you might be using, you do the exact same. So put an in marker where you need to start and an out marker where you need to finish. So anyway, so I've done me in and me out here. Um, oh, yeah, before I go any further, let me just point out here. Project settings. I'm actually in 384, uh, th sorry, 3840 by 2160, which is ultra HD. Uh, I'm in 25 frames a second as well because I'm in PAL land. It's an 8-bit project just because my source files were 8-bit and it's just a two-channel uh, stereo fire, stereo audio as well. Okay, so what I'll do now, I'll go to export. So go to print to file. Now at this point here, I'm going to suggest that you use HQX. And the reason for that is, is because in recent times, Handbrake has now become completely compliant with HQ and HQX files. In the past, it didn't read its, uh, its colour correctly. Um, it, it used to misinterpret YUV and RGB. So anyway, right now, it works properly. So I would recommend you use HQX. In the past, I'll have recommended to people that they used YUY2 or one of the uncompressed um, YUV files. Um, now, there's no not necessary it's not necessary to do that now because hqx has always been an hq have always been an amazing codec which visually can produce the exact same quality as an uncompressed file so i'm going to go ahead and choose hqx so what you do down the that down your codex list here go to avi and then up here click on grass valley hqx super fine and make sure you've got export between in and out selected over here then go to export now what i do because um this is of like the utmost you know picture quality that i require from my final encodes what i do i go to custom put q to zero and put size to max now the thing is with this it will create a large file but nowhere near as is like large as an uncompressed file and just remember this is only going to be an intermediate file as soon as you finish with this file you delete it so yeah it might it might create a huge file um but so what you're going to get rid of it anyway so as long as you've got the drive space it's only going to sit there until you've got rid of the file afterwards um I, you know i kind of get really ticked off when people start moaning about like saving space and stuff it's absolutely ridiculous this is going to be like the utmost quality you want to start off with the utmost quality and like i say it doesn't hang around so you're going to delete it as soon as you've completed the project anyway so anyway what i'm going to do here i'm just going to go in i'm going to i'm just going to write let's see test hqx and i'll put this i'm just going to put it on the desktop actually for now okay so 
just double check my parameters are all right i've got my io markers set and i've got it on custom and i've named it test hqx okay so i'm going to save that so that's going to go off now and it's going to export this file to the desktop there we go it's done right now at this point from here on in this is more of the tutorial for handbrake and to do this particular type of encoding now the one thing i would say as well is i've prepared a a, a preset here so what we're going to do first of all is go and grab this preset so what you need to do is open up a web browser and then type in davidharry.com and then forward slash handbrake oops do handbrake in lowercase and then it's enter now you'll find here if, uh, that this is just a file for handbrake so what you need to do is right click on that do save link as and save it wherever you want to save it I'm, I'm going to save it on the desktop so we know where it is anyway. So there we go. I've saved it. Now, like I said, that's davidharry.com forward slash handbrake. There'll be a link in the description anyway if you're watching this on YouTube. Okay, so let me get rid of that. So as we can see here, there's that file that we've, I've just downloaded. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open up handbrake. Now, um, this is the very latest handbrake as well. Uh, you'd need to use this if you're going to be using HQX files as well. Uh, some people seem to have a, an issue with the latest handbrake, but you know, I'd always want to stay, you know, ahead of the game or at least, you know, on par with the game. So I wouldn't move backwards. Uh, I'd always stay with this version. Now, what it is, there's a there's something a bit odd about this. I can't get this to to um, import profiles and whatnot until it's actually got media loaded in so what we'll have to do first of all let's go to open source and go to file and then i'm going to go to where i've just put my file my test file uh, you would you, you would obviously point this to the file that you're going to do so this is test hqx i'm going to open that now once it's open i can now go up here to presets so go to presets and the, and then click on import from file and then direct yourself to where you downloaded the preset from my website i've got it here because i put it on the desktop so i'm going to open that and then what should happen it should appear da -da, in your list down here now this says david harry liverpool tv a basic mp4 template and this is exactly what it is it's a basic mp4 template so what i'm going to do i'm going to double click that and it what it what that's now done that's now applied to the hqx file that i've just pulled in so i'm going to run through this really quickly and just explain some of this now just bear in mind that this, this is kind of like a, a basic how to so i'm not going to get all bogged down too much in the heavy tech to do with encode and x264 and handbrake but suffice to say that what i've given you here is a basic template now we're we're assuming here that we're working in uhd 4k now that being the case the variations that i've used within this template fall within the hardware requirements of something that would be playing back this type of file and um, it will also work for other stuff and i'll explain this just after i get a bit further into this tutorial but just bear in mind that the settings that i've used to create this all fall within inside what would be a minimum for something that needs to play uhd in 4k now there is a possibility that this mightn't work on certain systems and that's only because uh, outside of certain formats there isn't really any standardization for 4k and uhd outside of you know like some of the disc uh, you know some of the domestic disc disc format uhd blu-ray and stuff like that but we're not we're not actually making that format here we're making a generic mp4 file at uhd anyway i'll go back to that a bit later and explain something else about it but for now we'll start off so we're in picture and what it's done here it's picked up the picture size of the uh, you know the, the footage that we've just brought into it now 
if you've gone full frame you'll be absolutely fine but if you use any kind of like cropping inside or any black bars like like 2.35 or 2.4 to 1 for like a widescreen cinema aspect ratio then you may want to cut that off and whatnot using the automatic cropping or do custom cropping but this right now is assuming that you're using the entire frame for the picture so right here this is fine um, and then in filters everything here is all switched off this also assumes that the you know we're working progressive which we have to be because there's no interlaced formatting for UHD although this template will work backwards and I'll show this a bit later the template will work backwards and will work with smaller file sizes but again only in progressive and if you go to video um, what we've got here we're encoding using x264 now let me just explain something really quickly here because a lot of people kind of like misunderstand or, or, or don't understand correctly what what this actually is right this says here h.264 and then in brackets x264 now h.264 is the codec and that is the video codec which consists well it's mostly associated with mp4 files you can put you can insert it into various other things like mkvs and whatnot but x264 is a encoding technology it is not a codec so h.264 is the codec and x264 is a technology which it's actually the name of an encoder and what happens is handbrake here is simply using x264 to make its h.264 video codec so hopefully that clears that up for some people because you know kind of lock on certain forums and around the internet and people kind of sometimes kind of like you know mix that it's like when people like you know call vacuum cleaners hoovers do you know what i mean one's the manufacturer one is the item okay so that's cool so like i say we're on x264 now the frame rate is same as source so regardless of what your frame rate is of your file that you put in so whether you're in pal land or ntsc land or you've got for, or you're using obscure weird things doesn't matter it will lock itself to the frame rate of the incoming file and then further down the, enc uh, the encoder presets and stuff i've left these uh, like in fact i'll come back to this in a second because this is where like it can get a bit contentious with people but encode the tune i've left that off now but what it is here encoder profile is on high encoder level is 4.1 now some people are going to moan about like oh blah 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 you know you can use different settings well yes you can but this is a basic template for people who don't have a great understanding of mp4 and x264 encoding and h264 and whatnot this is to get you going now what it is that high profile at 4.1 that will easily work with inside anything that is meant to be ultra hd compliant and that's the reason why i've used these particular settings you can fine tune these beyond that but like i said earlier i'm I'm not going to go into any great technical detail about this because this is meant to be a basic tutorial for basic usage. Okay, so all these settings down here are all fine. The other one thing as well that I've ticked up here is uh, I've optimized uh, for web. So the, the web optimized uh, icon is ticked there. Now, the reason for that is, is because although we're doing a ultra HD output at the moment, this particular template can, can handle anything below that as well. Um, so you might want to stream these files. So therefore, you need the atom placed at the start. Again, without getting too technical, you tick that box. And what it means is that you can stream it from a standard web, uh, web server. Okay, so that will just help certain instances. So it might as well be on. It being on won't interfere with any other usage of the file. It'll be fine. And then I'll come back to video in a second. We'll go to audio. Now what I've done, I've used AAC 320 kilobits a second stereo. Now AAC is like that. That that is the standard for MP4. Um, anything that is MP4 compliant has to be able to play AAC. Now I've used 320 kilobits per second on the bit rate. Excuse me, and that's because 
Um, I'm not entirely sure which filter is being used or which variation of the filter is being used at the moment it's with inside handbrake. So what it is, 320, it might sound high, but basically what it'll do, it'll give you a fantastic sound and stereo recording. And if you've got a stuff with like a lot of a lot of sounds in it and dynamic ranges, say stuff with music in and dialogue, the 320 will help you encapsulate everything within the actual encode of the audio and if the filter isn't bang up to date 320 will help it as well for alias and certain other qualities of audio encoding so basically it'll work um, and then on mix down i've chosen stereo um, because most people are likely to be listening just in stereo here and the chances are most of the stuff that's coming in will not have been done to a Dolby matrices or anything like that so there's no reason for us to actually select a down mix to pro logic again i don't want to get overly technical about these things but basically what this means is we've got a really good solid grounding for a stereo recording or a stereo encoding and then go to subtitles i don't have anything in there and if you, if people want to add something to that, that's fine. You can do it. I personally don't do it. Chapters, again, same thing. I don't touch it. So, but you can if you want to. So anyway, so where we're where we're at here is that we're kind of like ready to rock and roll, as it were. But the only last thing is is the bit rates we're going to use and whatnot for the video. So go back to video. Now here. You got a couple of options, and again, I'll, I'll try and keep this as untechnical as I possibly can. Now, you've basically got two ways to encode this, and that is tick this button here. And if if you read what comes up, it'll explain to you a bit more about that. Or you, you click on average bit rate, so it's, it's literally one of the two, really. Now, the configuration that I've got this in at the moment, it's constant quality, medium. Now, for a lot of people, that may well be all that they need. Now, if you want to learn a bit more about bit rates and types of encoding, you know, two pass variable bit rates, CBR, constant quality, you know, all these things, then, you know, do a bit more research on it. I can't go into that right now because, you know, this tutorial will just get longer and longer for a basic tutorial. So, anyway, as it stands here, um, the way I've left it set when it opens is fairly much a good starting point. Once you feel more comfortable with uh, experimenting with bit rates and, and then trying to reduce your file sizes and all the rest of it, because don't don't forget, X264 is the best encoder out there for like smaller bit rates. In which case, what I would normally do, I'd use an average bit rate two pass and then do like an extensive um, like preset, you know, like something that's going to take a lot longer to analyze the structure and stuff and don't do turbo or anything like that. Again, though, that's only because I've had a ton of experience encoding and stuff and kind of, you know, there's things that I like and I've got certain targets that I want to like put stuff to. But these things, you know, have a look at them and all the rest of it, see what suits you better. Um, but to start off with the settings that I've actually got it got in there, they should be okay for people to start off with. Okay, so that's all fine. That's all cool like that. So then the next thing to do is just do our destination file. So I'm going to go destination and I'm going to go back to the desktop again. And I'm just going to call this X264. And I'll save that. I'm running out of disk space. Okay, cool. Right, so I'll start that encode. Um, this this shouldn't take too long. So what I'm going to do is as soon as this is encoded, I'll launch it so we can have a quick look at it just to make sure it definitely did it. And then I'll explain something else about this particular template, which may be of use to other people as well who aren't doing Ultra HD or 4K or anything like that. Okay, so that's encoded. So I'm going to go to the desktop. And then let's see where am I? X264. Let me play that. Yeah, there we go. So it's encoded it. It's all great. Now, just a quick other thing while we're here and we've got handbrake open. What I'm going to do, 
I'm going to open source and open a different file. Now, let's see. Yeah, this file here. Now, this file is one of my end cards for my videos. And this particular file is only 1080. So what we'll do, we've, we've brought the file in. And then I'm just going to, I don't need to reapply, but I'm going to do it just for the sake of video. I'm going to double click back on that template again. Now, if we go back to the beginning and look at picture, <laughs> hold on a minute. I've inadvertently brought the wrong file in. <laughs> right, give us a second. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to pick another file because the file I just picked up was another UHD file. Right, so let me just go to open files here. Um, okay, so I'm just going to pick one of these GoPro files. And then what it'll do, on the picture input, you can see it's gone to a different size. So what it is here, the preset is actually rescaling itself to the size of the incoming picture. But everything else after that, all the filtering is off, so we're not the insulation, the noise, and nothing like that. All the video settings are exactly the same as they were. The audio settings are exactly the same. And then the subtitle and chapter settings remain the same. So, like I say, what this what this means is that this particular preset is actually good for a lot of things uh, and it'd be a good starting block for a you know a bunch of different types of fire you know sorry frame sizes and stuff or um or frame rates as well so it'll just adapt itself to the frame size coming in and then it'll also adapt itself to the frame rate of the file and then match all that for the export so essentially what you bring in goes back out the same size and the same frame rate Okay, um, yeah, I think that's probably about it then for this particular tutorial. Um, and if you like this tutorial, if you have a little look on my website, hopefully I might, might get one of these pop-up boxes at the end here. Um, and basically, I'm going to start doing at least once a month an Edius project and whatnot. But I have a little scoot around the, you know, my me, me YouTube stuff and whatnot. Anyway, thanks very much for watching the tu tutorial. Take care. Goodbye now.